In this video, we're going to talk about copyright and Creative Commons um, with some fair use thrown in. When we're creating media products, it's hard to create every single piece of it ourselves. So we often use what we call assets. They're images or sounds, music, etc., from other people. However, it's important to know when it is legal and ethical to do so. So that's what we're going to talk about in this, uh, in this video. So starting with copyright. Copyright in the US um, protects duplication, performance, sale, and usage rights of authors of original works. And then it lists a whole bunch of different kinds of original works. Um, remember that original works, that's what is copyrighted. It's important to know that someone doesn't have to have a copyright license or like the C with the circle around it or anything like that. You don't need that for something to be copyrighted. If I were to just write a musical in my spare time, that would be automatically copyrighted. Okay, so any creative work someone does gets automatic copyright. However, there are some things that are not covered under copyright. So that includes facts, um, ideas. So ideas can't be copyrighted, but if I use those ideas to create a, a painting or a book, the book or painting itself can be copyrighted. U.S. government documents, um, non-creative lists like phone books, if you remember what those are. And then finally, um, if something was created a long time ago, there's different laws about how much time they get before they go into the public domain. And so you can always look up, you know, a lot of older stuff is now in public domain, and that means people can use it however they want. So in education, um, we don't always have the money to get, to pay for copyright use of everything we wanna do. Um, and it's the same in some other fields. And so there's a law called the fair use law. And this is a way to be able to use copyrighted work for limited purposes. It's not a black and white decision. There's a four factor test for fair use, for fair use, excuse me. Um, and I'll go over these in more detail, but like the purpose and character of your use, the nature of the original, what you're borrowing from, the amount and substance of what you're using, and then the effect on the market from your use. So each of these is kind of a range you have to consider. So the first is just the purpose of the use. Why am I using this? If I'm using it for commercial purposes, it's not as fair. Whereas if it's educational, nonprofit, or a critical use, it is more fair. When we talk about a critical use, it means that we're using it to share a different idea. So for example, maybe this movie poster by itself might be copyrighted, might might be too old anyway, but let's just pretend it was copyrighted. But when I put it on here and I add this content that's explaining the movie poster, that makes it more of fair use. So that's the purpose. The nature of the use. This one we get confused on sometimes. If it's unpublished or more creative, it's actually less fair to use it. If something's been published or it's more factual, it is more fair. Okay, so just remember that just because someone hasn't published something doesn't mean you can use it. It's actually less fair to use it if they haven't actually published it. They haven't actually put it out there in the world um, or at least officially in the world. Next is the amount and substance. So if I'm just using a couple pages from a book um, versus like most of the book, it's more fair to use just a little bit. And the other is the heart of the work. So am I using the most important parts of the work, of the book or just kind of the peripheral stuff that people wouldn't be able to really understand the whole book? They're just looking at a little part of it from the peripheral elements. Then finally, there's effect on the market. And what I'm doing is going to harm the market or not have harm on the market. So for example, um, I put a video of my dog singing along with Josh Groban on YouTube. And um, he's quite a loud singer, he's a howler. And so YouTube put a copyright warning on it, I'll, but often copy YouTube, excuse me, will delete those types of things. The question is if it's fair use. 
do I think that people are going to be listening to my video instead of buying the Josh Groban music? Probably not, because my dog is howling in it, right? So then we say there's not really much market harm in that. So then it's more fair to do. Now this gets a little bit complicated. Um, and so some people came up with this idea called Creative Commons. It makes it easier to do two things, okay? So when I create these slides and videos, I want to make them so a lot of people can use them. So I can actually create a license that tells people, look, you can use this, I'm okay with that. But I can put the conditions under which it's okay to use. So you can use it, but you need to say, it's by me because I'm trying to build my career. That's what this means right here. We'll talk about it more in a minute. It also makes it easier to use others work. Now, when I use someone else's work, I put something like this. This is called an attribution. And um, this is how I give credit for someone to someone else for letting me use their work. So here's the different Creative Commons licenses that can have different combinations of these attributes. If it's zero, that basically means you don't have to put any attributions on it. Commonly, you'll see by BY. That means you need to credit or cite the creator or author. Um, so that's really important. You've got to put an attribution if there's a BY. There's derivative, whether or not you can change the work or if you need to use it as is. So can people break it apart and use it? Can they change the colors or they need to leave it as is? Um, share alike is just... Look, um, if you're gonna use my stuff, I expect you to also pay it forward and share with others. So if you're gonna use my slides for something, I want you to also put a Creative Commons license on it so that we can pay it forward. And the other is non-commercial. Basically, I don't want you making money off of my work so I can put NC. So these are the different licenses you can use. So we're gonna start by talking about how we use work from other people. So I'm creating a slideshow and I need an image of a bird or something. How do I do that with Creative Commons? I'm gonna go these more details, but you're gonna find it, review the license, make the attribution, add it to your work. So finding open resources, there's a lot of ways to do it. This is with Google Images. So if I search for something, if I click on tools right here, I can actually have it filter by licenses. So I can have it only show Creative Commons license stuff. Now I still, when I select that image, I still need to check and see what the license is because I might need to add an attribution, but it makes it easier to find things that you'll be able to use in some form. I get a lot of pictures as well from Flickr. Um, and so on Flickr, if you search for something, you can also filter by copyright restrictions, okay? So that makes it easier to find. There's also just a tons of things, and this is probably slightly outdated list. It's from um, Tori Trust's Web Design Basic for Educators on EdTech Books. Um, selecting digital media is the chapter. There's just a whole bunch of different places you can go and find resources you can use in the stuff you create. After you find your resource, you need to review your license. So this is an example of a Flickr page. So there'd be an image up here. And down here, it says public domain. That's the license. That actually means I don't have to put an attribution at all. But if it says something like CCBY, then I would need to use an attribution if I'm going to use that work. So to create the attribution, um, I can use something like this Open Washington Attribution Builder. It's openwa.org slash attrib builder, like this, okay? So um, when I do that, I can just put in the title, and links, whatever information I have, and it'll create the attribution that then I can copy and paste into work. So it's what I actually did here. Sorry, this is kind of blurry but I, this is the name and title, this is the creator, and this is what it's licensed under. In some cases, like on Wikimedia Commons, you can actually have it create the attribution for you directly, um, but if you don't have it, that Open Washington site is really nice to use for that. So you add that attribution to your work, and that's it, if you're using someone else's. 
Now let's talk about sharing your work with others. You'll see I put something here because I want to share my slides with other people. Um, so the first thing is you do need to check licenses for any content you are using. So for example, I'm using this that is CC BYNC. I have to at least follow those BYNC restrictions if this image is in my creative work. I can add like share alike, but um, I need to use what they have here. Um, you can check licenses for any content you are using. Um, choose what license you want, add attributions for anything you're using, um, and then create the license and add it to your work. And that's when you create these images, is when you license your own work. You can actually just Google Creative Commons licenses and look at the images and you'll find you can just copy any of the images in. You don't have to officially do anything, um, but that just lets people know how they can use my work. Now, there's a new thing that people have been using lately, AI, generative AI, and creating images with things like Dolly or Adobe Firefly or Midjourney. And it's not entirely clear yet what that means for copyright and how it is appropriate to use it. So for now, what I recommend, this is from someone's blog post and I, I took off the image, but there was an image up there and he just wrote the image was generated by Adobe Firefly and he edited using Photoshop beta. I think it's just good practice to make sure you acknowledge when something was created by AI so people know. So that's what I would recommend do, doing if you use one of those AI creators. Alrighty, takeaways. Copyright, it covers creative works. Any creative works, even if the person hasn't officially copyrighted it, there's really no such thing as official copyright, even if they haven't registered it. Fair use, limited use of copyrighted work depending on purpose, nature. Remember, if it's unpublished, it's less fair to use than if it's published. The amount or substance of the work and if it's going to affect the market. And finally, Creative Commons, it's clear guidelines for sharing and using media. Thanks for watching.